This video is sponsored by nobody. I'm so poor. Hello, gentles and lady men. I'm Ulan the Bison, and today I want to talk about game balancing. Balancing an online multiplayer game has to be one of the most difficult tasks imaginable. No matter what you do, it cannot possibly be perfect for as long as the game is asymmetrical in gameplay. It's not like chess, for example, where chess is always balanced, even if you change the way pawns move in a chess balance patch, it would still be perfectly balanced between both players since they both have the exact same setup and pieces. But what about games like For Honor, which has more than 30 different heroes now, all with their own completely unique movesets, combos, mechanics, and feats? Or RTS games, where different civilizations with completely different rosters of units and forms of economy and technologies? Or Dark Souls, where most players aren't even the same level, let alone using the same gear? What about games like Evolve, where the game is designed around a 1v4 between power one powerful monster player and four first-person shooters? How do you balance these games? Some people pretend that balancing a game is an incredibly easy feat, or that some simple solution solves the whole game's problems. Sometimes people feel that new hero or gears or civilizations just make the game worse by existing and should simply be deleted from the game, a completely impractical solution. There is no such thing as exact perfect balance in asymmetrical gameplay. No matter what changes a developer makes, it will please half the audience and piss the other half off, and when you make big patches with huge amounts of these polarizing changes, the one thing that's guaranteed is that everybody in the audience will be upset to a degree, and that the game still isn't balanced because such a thing is fundamentally impossible. And yet, despite that, devs can't ignore game balance either. Some civilizations, or heroes, or gear, or whatever it is you know, the game is the balance is based around, will be overpowered or weaker than others, and that will always need fixing. Just because the game will never be balanced does not mean that balance it does not need to happen. New content will always need to be trickled into a game to keep it alive, both to incentivize new players by showing the game is still supported, and keeping older players interested with new things to do. But new features are always bound to have balance problems, which will always make the audience upset, which creates a need for more balancing, which will help, but change some aspects that pisses everybody off again, creating an endless and an internal spiral that is the life of a game developer for an online multiplayer game that's already been released. And the result of all this is an entire population in your game who can all agree on one thing, and it isn't the balancing. It will never be the balancing. The one thing everybody can agree on will be that the developers have no idea what they're doing, which isn't fair at all. That the patch doesn't solve the game issues. They didn't address, that they didn't address the real problem. That some changes have huge unintended consequences that break the game and ba balance all over again and require another patch. Or that they somehow went another patch without updating their favorite hero who hasn't been touched by the developers in years. Even if you think developers' decisions and balance changes are questionable, and I've certainly thought that about many a balance decision in my life, I encourage you to give them some credit. Believe it or not, you do not have the best ideas when it comes to balance. Believe it or not, you, player number two, 22,006, are not any more special in your balancing ideas than player number 22,007 right after you who thinks the exact same thing about himself. This applies to myself as well. It also applies to professionals in games who are in the top 10 or even 5%. And yet, just because of this fact does not mean your opinions are not important, valid, or even wrong. You may be totally right that some change would really benefit the game you play, but all those changes you criticize in the patch notes were made with similar goals to solve similar problems that perhaps you weren't able to see from your perspective of a user instead of a developer. And there are certainly problems that will exist that users will see from their perspective that developers will be blind to or totally overlook. This is all to say that balancing a game is unbelievably complex. And to get to the point of the whole video, when deciding how to balance a game, where should developers get their balance changes from? Should they listen to competitive and knowledgeable players who know more about the game than anyone else? Should they rely solely on graphs and data and win rates? How does one avoid bias and feedback from players? 
that's what this video is about. And that's the longest video uh, uh, intro I've ever made. If this video topic interests you, please consider hitting the subscribe button, hitting the like button, and telling me your opinions on the matter, and what other gaming topics I should talk about. This video is all about multiplayer games. It's about all multiplayer games, but I will use several specific games as examples. This topic came into my head after an argument occurred in my Discord server regarding the balance of Age of Empires 3, a game I'm sure most viewers of this video follow my channel content for. Though I would like to diversify the channel, so that's not the only game we're going to be talking about, but it will play a part. In this argument, spawned from a discussion based off the recently released patch notes for an upcoming patch to the game, an elite's top-level player claimed that the opinions of a group of top-level players and the player at, and players at the very highest skill ceiling of the game mattered more than the opinions of anyone else in terms of balance, and that win rates and statistics were useless in comparison due to them also taking data uh, into account data from unskilled players, who lost because they sucked at the game instead of because of balance reasons. In response, a sizable number of people retaliated, saying that the gameplay of top-level players might as well be a completely different game than the ones that the lower players do, and changes made for those top-level players often make no sense when scaled back to people of average skill, that the game should be balanced around making the average player have an even win chance with every civilization, and not the most skilled players. That anecdotal claims of what is and isn't balanced by top-level players mean nothing compared to statistics and data. Even if there is an obvious answer to you when hearing these two arguments, neither one is objectively perfect. I must profess myself leaning towards the side of the more casual players, and I definitely took part in this debate in the server and butted some heads, a large part due to an unfortunate condescending tone from some of the top players involved in this discussion that made me deaf to their points and condescending right back. You know, as happens in a Discord server. However, after the anger in the server had cooled and bad attitudes were gone from both sides and points became better worded, I started to understand some points the top level players were making. I don't agree with all of them, but it was enough to shift my perspective to something closer to the middle. There are very good, valid reasons to say that top players don't matter. When it, co uh, when it comes to games with lots of different playables, it's impossible to play everyone, and people develop biases towards civilizations they play more of, and they play less of heroes and playables that they have a particular distaste of. It's not just players who get these biases, but developers too. How could they not have favorites? I used to do a fair bit of artwork, and I absolutely picked favorites among my portraits. Biases and favoritism from players and devs is how occasional balance mistakes happen in For Honor, with Nushia being the perfect example of this. Nushia has not been directly buffed or nerfed or had her moveset meaningfully changed in well over two years at this point. Over the course of her balancing, she had a couple bugs in her kit fixed, she has been indirectly buffed when the devs removed a feature called Zone Parrying, an option that was available to every character except her and one other, thus making her better indirectly. Uh, at one point, she had her deflect attack changed to be standardized with the rest of the Assassin class, and after years and years of her release, she is almost completely unchanged and is borderline a year two hero still being played in the game's seventh year, with all other changes being part of global changes that affect all heroes. She is the only character in the entire game with no uninterruptible attacks, no undodgeable attacks, no bashes, no unblockable attacks and outside of her deflect and no recovery cancels, with every character in the game having at least two of these, usually three or more. And her unique mechanic her moveset is based around is nowhere near good enough to make up for this fact. She feels like a relic of a much older game. They even took her super unique 4th level feat Infection and casually gave it to another character as a 1st level feat unlocked way earlier in the match that, uh, that made, and made that character's 4th level feat just be an objectively, obscenely stronger version of Nushia's Infection feat with the exact same ability cooldown, and didn't bat an eye. That character was released more than two years ago, and this obvious feat disparity was never addressed. 
By contrast, Berserker, a relatively strong character with easy access to every single thing I mentioned before except bashes, is widely agreed by the community to be in a solid spot balance-wise, if a teensy bit on the strong side. I'm sure some people disagree with that, but I think the general consensus is about right. Uh, and yet this character just got buffed for what feels like the thousandth time in the most recent patch by adding more recovery cancels from his attacks. And this is most likely to do with the relatively well-known fact that Berserker is one of the dev's main characters that he likes to play. All of these points and examples of why listening to elites and top players, and even devs sometimes, isn't the end-all be-all, these, these points are solid. And this is what gave me my foundation of preferring graphs and data instead of top-level opinions, is playing years and years of For Honor. Nushia never changed because few players ever play her, as she doesn't razzle and dazzle and look as cool as something more mainstream like Warden or Lawbringer. To discuss the opposite end of the spectrum, I'll talk a little bit more directly in regards to Age of Empires 3 and the casual side of the argument that transpired in my Discord server. Besides being linked to me and my brother's YouTube channels, the Sunbros Discord is also in part an Age of Empires 3 focused community, with an Age of Empire with Age of Empires specific tabs making up roughly half of the server's chat rooms. Over the years we have played the game and grown our server, we've attained a vast number of incredibly talented members who have used their skills in uh, a really beneficial way to the Age of Empires 3 community. Hellpunch, one of our longest members, designed a companion app for the game, full of info on the game's civilizations, units, and maps, uh, and used the Discord server as a platform to recruit and speak to beta testers for the app. And I have made more than a couple videos covering updates to the app to tell people of its existence. He is still active, updating the app and adding features to this day. We have amassed a library of strategies step by, and step-by-step -step written guides on how to perform them for each Civ in the game and made them publicly available for everyone to see. Compiled instructions and guides put together by me and other knowledgeable players to help new players master the basics. But most impressively, the crown jewel of the community information we have compiled and made public to all players and one of the biggest conversation pieces in the Age of Empires 3 community over the last month has been the Civilization Grid, a project made from the combined efforts of several talented people around the server. The Civilization Grid pulls data of the results from all competitive 1v1 matches, filters and sorts them, and compiles them into a massive grid showing the win rate each civilization has on each other civilization. It also shows overall win rates for each civ, and makes the raw data completely viewable. It only shows data from the top third of players who play competitively, and doesn't add a game result if the match is too short, indicating somebody disconnected, or if the skill gap between players in the match is far too big. It also records how long each game was, and shows data like win rate by minute, where you can see, for example, that Aztec wins most of its games between the 8 and the 12 minute mark, whereas most other civs take a little bit longer to win or lose. It al it's also filterable by skill level, so you can change it from 1100 plus ELO, which accounts for roughly one third of the active competitive player base, and raise it to 1250, or even 1800 plus, where most of the game's tippity top players reside, accounting for about 150 players. However, the farther up you go, the more the stats don't give any useful information as the sample size becomes too small. That high up on the ranked ladders, some matchups uh, haven't even been done yet. Others have only a handful of games, and so say that. And some say that because of this, this a civilization has a 100% win rate over another one when only two or one matches have been played between them. This grid allows any members of the, any member of the server to freely check the win rates of any civilization in the game, and has been a very eye-opening experience for the community as a whole. With some people being affirmed of their beliefs, others surprised to see they were wrong about their assumptions on the game's win rates, and others simply just denying the statistics and saying they aren't accurate at all due to their personal experiences, which I think we can all agree is the one take that's absolutely incorrect. These, there, are, there are arguments to be made that these stats don't matter, but their accuracy is undeniable. 
there are factors about against using stats like this as the basis for deciding what playables to adjust in balance patches. Nothing is perfect. One, for example, for one example, this information we've collected does not identify any any individual aspects of the civilizations and has zero indication of what exactly about a civilization might be overpowered. It won't take into account if there's one particular strategy that is broken but rarely performed. Civilizations might be perfectly balanced at the top levels of play, but unbalanced at lower levels due to one civilization being easier to learn than another, resulting in more wins from newer players. This can artificially boost win rates of a civilization like Sweden, a civ that is incredibly simple and easy to pick up and play, where people may ride it to a point where they are rising and collecting wins above their skill level, not because Sweden is broken, but simply because it's easier for lesser skilled players to learn than something more complex like Italy or Hausa. These players then try playing other civs and immediately take losses due to the civ not being as simple, thus lowering perfectly balanced civilization win rates. Civilizations like Aztec have powerful rushes and have much higher win rates at lower levels of play where people are not as good as defend at defending early pressure. Just as one could say skill doesn't matter as long as both players are equally skilled, one could also make the argument that some of these stats are undeniably skewed to differing levels uh, due to differing levels of barrier of entry, something that undeniably hurts some civs more than others. There's no way to really know how much of these uh, how much these are accounted for when looking at the stats. I suspect it's not a huge portion, but there's no denying that it exists either and probably plays a factor in some of the civilization's win rates. A point in favor of the top players is that the competitive meta will always be ahead of the game and developed earlier than the casual meta. Competitive strategies are created at the top levels of play first in most games, and then trickle down over time to more casual players, resulting in most of the player base not catching on to the fact that something might be broken or overpowered for months and months after it's discovered. At the same time, the top level players totally ignore big issues to the lower skill level uh, to the lower skill levels of the game. Uh, an example in Age of Empires 3 was USA Gatling Guns, something that most top-level players don't have any issues with because they can be one-shot by culverns, not taking into account that most players do not have their skill level and capability to micro and control culverns in the middle of big battles. This can be related to any kind of competitive game. Advanced techniques can be taken for granted by top levels by top level players who assume anyone decent at the game can do it. But at the same time, some players use this as an excuse to ask for buffs for their specific playable in order to avoid getting more skill at the game. There's a fine line with no easy answer in sight, with biases and valid arguments around both sides in every corner. After For Honor and Age of Empires 3, there is one game I would like to briefly mention, and that's Rainbow Six Siege, a game I think that I think achieves a pretty happy medium. Rainbow Six Siege separates people's competitive skill level into different ranks, uh, going copper, bronze, silver, gold, platinum, emerald, diamond, and finally champion, for some reason, uh, for the top level players. Eight total ranks. They have been ex they have explicitly stated that their balance decisions comes mostly from data and what they hear from players in the Emerald tier, the third best rank. A selection of people who know what they are doing and, and are undeniably skilled, but not so skilled that they are likely to lose vision of what it's like for lower level players, and also probably a skill level that fluctuates in members pretty frequently. I would imagine. Not every game is able to do this route, unfortunately, do simply from player counts. Uh, the sample size would be way, way small in uh, too small in something like Age of Empires 3, for example. And nobody plays ranked modes in For Honor, so it wouldn't work. For it, so it really wouldn't work for every game. But for me, it indicates a happy medium in skill level you should take into account, at least from my own opinion. I do not play Rainbow Six Siege, but the combination of both having a set system that makes perfect sense at a surface level, and also the devs having the transparency to say exactly what affects their balance decisions, is something extremely commendable, and I wish more games were like this. 
I will not opt to pass any judgments on the effectiveness of this particular system, as I do not play the game and do not understand the state of, of balance as, de as deeply as I might for For Honor in Age of Empires 3, with, of, with which both of which I have been playing for years and years. But to me, this seems the happiest of the happy mediums. So when all said and done, should de developers take uh, the opinions of top-level players and ignore the lower-level players because they don't know what they're talking about? Should they ignore top-level players for fear of unit bias and focus more on statistics and grids? I'm sure they have more detailed stuff than what a couple people in a Discord server can come up with. Uh, the, the answer really isn't cut and dry. It's, pr it's a mixture of both, to be sure. Uh, but where you want to draw the line is up to the developer, I suppose. And I don't have an easy answer for us. I think this video has gone on long enough, so I will stop here. Thank you so much to anyone who stuck around the whole video. I hope that you learn something about game balance, if anything, and that maybe you give your developers a little bit more credit when they are clearly trying to fix the game's balance, but they just miss the mark just so slightly, because they always will. It's just the nature of these games. I would love to do more of these videos and diversify my content more, so let me know what you guys would like to see. Please consider leaving a like and a comment, and also subscribing. Thank you for watching, have a wonderful day, and goodbye.